We saw some of the foreigners or even new citizens, they are trying to get around with Singaporean. But some of the foreigners, they try to act class, but they are not class. <laughs> so I think they got attitude problem. Of course, we have a good example, like I got one friend from Thailand, the mom was really can get along with community centre, all the members, you know, go to a vegetable farm or fish farm. They got one Angmo, I mean, sorry, not two of you, you know, <laughs> I mean Angmo, in my restaurant. My staff accidentally just pour a little bit of soup on the shirt, that they sustain, but the, the Angmo is really insist, want us to pay cash. And he said the shirt is the tailor-made, it's about $1,000. Then we say, uh, why don't we get to the dry clean? We buy a new shirt for you. If we cannot get out the stain, then we will pay you. But he said, no, no, I want now, I want now. Or those, I call my lawyer. Then I tell my staff, say, I'm there, it's okay. He got his lawyer and I have my lawyer. Alexander, yeah. yes. would you have asked them to pay? Well, <laughs> I'm going to say, sorry, I think that was my father-in-law. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's banned from Singapore. No, it's okay, it's okay. He's banned now, from Singapore. Yeah. We drive up, we clean everything, okay, then we return good. to him. Sometimes we meet some of the foreigners or new citizens, it's their attitude problem. What, what are we going to, you know? We cannot slap them, it's, 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 it's often, it's, we cannot do anything. I have well, to apologise for this Singaporean. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 problem, no, problem. I can come into the, like yes. <laughs> I can come into the, this story easily because uh, I was at one time a foreigner here in Singapore. For the start, it was quite tough because it was a totally different experience coming into the country with diff different culture. But it's important as a foreigner coming into the new country to, to respect the people who is there and, and try as fast as possible, if you can, integrate into the local uh, kind of society. I see many foreigners here, they keep to each other. My three kids is born here and I, in the end, in 2007, I applied to be citizen uh, as my, um, on my own and uh, I got rejected three times. I rejected once, I, I didn't give up, I went again. And they remember me and they said, oh, you are the football player, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they reject me again and I become in 2007 a citizen and um, this is my home and I want to be part of this Singapore. I don't want to try to be different. Act high class. Yes. <laughs> I must say a lot of Singaporeans also try to act what they're really not. I'm not sure if it's that... Uh, so I think there are bad examples everywhere. You yes, can... everywhere you'll find that, you know, bad and good. But... So, Mark, so Alex is, is an Angmo Singaporean, right? So the Angmo in your restaurant. It could have been one of us. I mean, mm. what, what made you so no, sure no, that no. it was not one of us? No, no, no. He's from London. Well, it really uh, wasn't uh, me. Uh, it really, oh, really oh, sorry, wasn't sorry, me. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, uh, from America. Yeah, no, no, America. No, no, the angle is from uh, London because uh, he was in my restaurant quite oftenly. Then uh, some of the I mean, supervisors know he was a uh, foreign worker. But, I think but no, it's a good point. The, the, Can I just sorry, the, jump in there, Minister? Because I see both your points. And I think, yes, Singaporeans can behave just badly. You know, there's good people and bad people in all walks of life. But if you are a visitor in someone else's country, you stand out more. So the onus is on you to step up to the plate. There's no point saying as an Angmo, oh yeah, but I saw eight other Singaporeans who were behaving just as badly in the restaurant. They won't remember them. They will remember you because you're the foreigner. The onus is on you. You are the guest in this country. Even if you have a great life, even if you are doing very well, congratulations, but remember you're a guest and don't rub other people's noses in it. Just go about your life, your daily life, discreetly and respectfully. Sometimes we feel that foreigners may be very atas. I remember when I was in America to study in college, my first impression was, these guys are very loud, always talking always giving their views and opinions, even if I don't want to listen to them, they are talking. Then you get to know them better, and I got to know them as friends. And I realised that they were brought up different from me. I was brought up to sit in class, keep quiet, and pay attention to the teacher. They are brought up in class to do show and tell, to speak up in, at homes, in the family table. They are like that. They talk freely. And it's not about being disrespectful or wanting to be confrontational, it's just different. And it's just a small example of how we can be so quick to judge sometimes and label people with a certain stereotype. When it comes down to just understanding each other, I think we can make progress. So we've discussed how difficult it can be to integrate Singaporeans and foreigners. Now to add on to this complication, we have this whole online sphere where people get to also vent, and vent rather freely, I might add. Can I just have your views on this, Minister? Are the majority of Singaporeans unhappy? Sharon, it's indeed very easy to find anti-foreigner sentiments online. And it goes back to what we said earlier, that there will always be negative examples of bad behaviour. Unfortunately, the nature of internet is such that negative examples are the ones that attract the most response. There are many positive acts that Singaporeans and foreigners do, but you will never get that kind of response. 
Recently, we also had a Taipusam incident and there was an article that said that the people who sparked off the Taipusam incident were Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Completely false, no basis at all, but it got people all started to get heated up, yes. criticising the Filipino community unfairly. It's again about personal responsibility. When we see something online, if it's indeed a bad behaviour by someone, foreigner or Singaporean, we should stand up for it, we should say this is not acceptable, we do not think this is the right thing to do, but we shouldn't make generalisations of all foreigners and say everyone is like that. Internet or Instagram, it's just a very personal. I put on this good thing or bad thing, the only result I want to see is whether how many likes I have, how many viewers. Wow, I got 10,000 viewers. So next time, I do again, I will complain, I will say about a bad thing. Wow, now I got 15,000 likes and 20,000 viewers. I disagree with Mark though. It's not personal. Every time you use a social platform, it's never personal because you're perpetuating a stereotype and imagery. 10,000 people actually believe you. Now, that's kind of scary. So it comes back to you know, Sharon's point about personal responsibility that we have if we want to use the internet. But Minister, my personal read is it is not the majority of Singaporeans. In fact, I would argue very strongly that on the whole, most Singaporeans are very welcoming of foreigners. So my husband is American. My husband has never had but kind words and gestures to make him feel welcome as you know, part of a Singapore family. So I would like to hear your take on this, Minister. It's important for each one of us again as individuals to see how we want to act online. Don't make comments about certain groups of foreigners generalising there. Don't spread hate remarks, don't spread xenophobic sentiments. And if we see such things, I think we should say that it's wrong. Well, I'm not a big fan of the social media, honestly. I, I, but he I has many fans a... on social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the thing is a lot of nonsense is coming on always there and a lot of problems for all of us, not only for the foreigners but also for the locals and Singaporeans. majority of Singapore, I think, is welcoming uh, Foreigners. We can see so many foreigners coming in, not only as a, to live here, but also as a tourist. This is the most open country and city I've ever been. So we shouldn't really think about these small minority people who don't have a life. I think nothing better to do, and they just steal some stories. We just want to live in a peaceful life. It's just uh, everything what we need here is it's here in Singapore. So Maybe not enough people realise that there is a sort of protection when you're on the net because you're not saying it face to face. Yeah. Mm. People behave differently when it's face to face. Definitely. But I've discovered from people I know of who suddenly become a different character on the net. Yes. And suddenly there's all this hatred and yeah. anger when you never get the sense of it when you're face to face with that person. That's a terrific point, actually. Um, so a there's a huge point. protection there. I'm just wondering, and this is, would be controversial, what about legislation? Legislation. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. Because people just go right across the line. And it's it's sometimes worse than people breaking laws, you know? Confrontation is is a good way of doing it because a very, very prominent blogger in Singapore, who I will not name, has made a name by writing very xenophobic blogs and, and articles and so on. I confronted this blogger for a TV show face to face and I said, so if by your writing you want to get rid of me, no, 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 I'm always okay, I'm always okay. So you want to get rid of the Bangladeshi workers who empty your rubbish chutes or clean your dustbins and, and maintain your parks and gardens, no, no, they're okay. So you want to get rid of the, uh, the Filipinos, the Indonesians, the Myanmarese who look after your children and clean your homes, no, no, they're okay. Uh, what about the, the big CEOs who set up companies and employ 300, 500, 600 Singaporeans? No, they're okay. Is there anybody left? <laughs> <laughs> and he could not think of a single sort of group of foreign people that were left in this country that he wanted to kick out. Amidst all this talk about stereotypes and noise on the internet, do you feel that there are some ingrained misperceptions about foreigners in Singapore and do these get in the way of our integration efforts? And if that's the case, then how can we educate Singaporeans on the truth and not let them perpetuate the myths? There are indeed cultural prejudices and it takes a lot of effort. But first of all, recognising where these stereotypes and prejudices are, are important. One of them is the feeling that some Singaporeans have. PRs and the newcomers are not committed enough to Singapore. They are making use of us 
and they are here to use Singapore as a stepping stone to greener pastures. So this perception, perhaps as you say, is a bit ingrained in some people's thinking and it shapes their views about foreigners. It's quite unfortunate because actually most of the people who come, like Alex would testify to, are here sincerely wanting to make Singapore home. And I would also say that many of them, in fact, are people with links to Singaporeans. They are not just strangers coming here for the first time. They would have spent a significant amount of time here and quite a significant proportion of them have Singaporean family, meaning they are either married to a Singaporean because we are having more mixed marriages now or they are children of Singaporeans. They are not strangers. They are people who have spent time here. They are genuinely wanting to sink roots here. If we are better able to appreciate that, that would go some way in enhancing our integration efforts. Most foreigners do make a conscious effort to integrate. I mean, my daughter does uh, Mandarin speech and drama. You see more Angmors doing it now, yeah. and they, they literally stand out like white, white faces in the crowd, and they always get the biggest round of applause, you know, when they do Lang Tzu Lao Hu or something. I think Lang Tzu Lao Shu, right? Lang Tzu Lao Hu, Lang Tzu Lao Hu, Pao De Guai, Pao De Guai. Sorry, <laughs> correct? Lang Tzu Lao Hu. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> two tigers, two tigers. So it's OK, and then my English educated. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah, so it's great to see not just Caucasians, by the way, Indians there, yeah, very um, much so. the Southeast Asians, and, and so yeah. on and so on. So I do think gradually we are seeing that more, more of an effort to integrate into mm. society, and that can only be a good thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, even one time as I did a, a dinner and dance, the company is from Poland. So the CEO bring along the daughter. The daughter is primary three by studying in Singapore, mm. but the company set here is quite a long time already. So the daughter run up to me, hey, you are Mark, huh? <laughs> uh, Ang Mo small girl, talk to me. You are Mark, huh? I see you on the TV, leh. <laughs> I feel so loved. Uh, Ang Mo speak of Singlish. Can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. No, we don't have to look very far, to be honest. Sometimes even right under our own roofs, we share our roof with someone yes. who is not Singaporean. Yes. I mean, for example, so yeah. many of us have helpers at home. Oh, very much so. You know, our, yeah. my helper is Filipino, mm. and sometimes the questions that I get asked is not that, oh, you have a helper, but it's. How come you take Filipino helper, not Indonesian helper? My helper is able to now speak some Malay, and my mm. daughters can now speak a little bit of Tagalog, right. which is quite interesting. Mm. Mm. The cultural exchange yes. and the human values are yeah. the same. Yeah, very much so. so. Minister, I want to come back to the point about misperceptions. What is your take on the kind of misconceptions I think that are even more worrying than what we talked about on the internet? The concerns that Singaporeans being priced out of yes. their jobs yes. and their careers, not just at the lower end, yes. but where they have a misperception that salaries are being dampened mm. because of the inflow mm. of unskilled workers or less skilled workers mm. from the region. And also on the higher end, where there is a concern among professionals that, you know, maybe it is easier for companies to port in talent yes. rather than wait for Singaporeans to be groomed. I'll give you the example of the finance sector, a sector mm. which people think is foreign professionals. Quite a number of the banks in Singapore have Singaporean CEOs. Their offices are run by Singaporeans. If you talk to them, they would say they want to hire Singaporeans. They don't need a fair consideration framework to want to hire Singaporeans. They want to give Singaporeans a chance. But as a bank, as an MNC, when they hire for leadership positions, they hire on merit. And they would look globally to the best talent that they have. So I think what we ought to do is to give as much opportunities as possible to Singaporeans, give them as much advantages in Singapore. But in the end, the Singaporeans themselves have to understand that competition is global. And this is true anywhere they go. They can try to work in the finance sector in London, in Tokyo, in Hong Kong. It is the same. And if you don't have that kind of global competition, the bank may not even be in Singapore. This is the reality of a globalised world. When I grow up, I want to be a lawyer. I make lots of money. I will be a banker, I make more money than you. Banker? My papa says all the top banking jobs are going to foreigners. My papa says as long as you have the right attitude, you will always have the chance to succeed. Singaporeans or foreigners does not matter. What matters is that we do a good job. Hmm, I still think becoming a lawyer will be better. No need to compete with so many people. When I become a boss, I hire you as my lawyer. Whether I accept your offer or not, depends on how much you're willing to pay.